Okay, I think that is just the right amount of wood for today's turning, or at least for part of today's turning. I have some cherries, some walnut, and some maple. And I don't know if you can see it. Uh, maybe from my angle I can see it, but you probably can't see it. But I'm looking at an illusion right in there. I know I can see it, but the, probably the camera angle is hiding it. So what I'm going to do besides make an illusion is I'm going to attempt to incorporate two other methods of building a bowl besides doing an illusion. So as we get this put together, I'll see if I can do that or not. That's the plan. So I think we're going to have like a, a three-in-one turning here. I'm going to get all these pieces set up. I've got my wedgie sled set up. I'm going to tell you what the angles are, and here's one of the pieces here. I'll tell you the size of those, but I'll do it as we get through the video. I'll give you the dimensions, the angles, and I'll tell you right now that we need 14 of each type. All 14 times 3 looks just like this to make the illusion. Seems pretty simple, and I think it's going to be simple to put together. But I can guarantee you it's going to look pretty complex after it's done. Let me get all set up. We'll start cutting. All these cuts are exactly the same. Same length, same angle. So I'll just show you some of the cutting here. I'm about ready to start gluing this together and I did say I'd give you the dimensions of this piece and all the pieces that you need for the illusion have that exact same shape. I cut it from strips that were 0.575 thick. The height is, this is just what I had. That could be whatever you chose. That's a 30 degree angle on that piece right there. I'm not sure if you can see that or you can see this, it's the same angle. I use my wedgie sled and it's tilted in the way that you'd make six segments per ring. And that means that's a 30 degree cut and that is, so there's 60 degrees here times six, then you have a complete ring. That dimension, measuring down this way, is 0.65. That meant that that's 0.65, and that is, and how that worked out is, this is double the 0.65, so it's 1.30 inches long. That's the piece. If you make pieces just like that, it should all go together. But you want to measure this yourself. If your thickness is off a few thousands, this will be as well. And maybe it'll be off even more than a few thousands because of that angle. There was a couple ways I was thinking about gluing this together and one of them I'd sure like it to work but I don't want to gamble on this. Uh, I'll show you a picture if I had it laying there ready to do it. The problem is every piece was looking like this all glued together at one time. It sure looks like it would work, but I don't want to take a chance. Next time, I will. What I'm going to do is glue them up. Well, I, I have a little sample here. We're just going to glue them just like that. Out of the three types of wood, I use a walnut and a cherry, a walnut and a maple, and then a cherry and a and a maple. So that's the three that make a little section. So that's what you have to do to create this. So I'm going to put these back in here so I don't mix them up. I'll show you how I glue it together. We'll start with this one. Now that is actually plenty of glue for what we're doing. I rub it around and make it nice and flat. Then I'll put them together like this. Rub it pushing fairly hard. And I will take paper towel and some water. Like 
that. And then I'll just wipe the glue off so I don't have to scrape it off later. I'm going to set it down again, make sure it's sitting flat and that these ends are like so. And that's all I'm going to do to that. I'll come back later and show you how we glue them together into a bigger group. But I'll just do all of these and it'll look just like I did there. So I'll be back shortly when all of these pieces are glued up. All the pieces are glued together like this. I stacked it up the way it should go and it's just a dry fit right now. And it's always a good idea just to make a few extra just in case you got to swap something out to make it fit better and I did have to switch one out. Now the trick is getting these pieces over here in the same order while we glue it together. So you notice I have some masking tape across that group of pieces. That's because the first time I reached over to get some, they all just moved around and got out of place. So the tape is keeping them in the right place. So about the only way I can get rubber bands around something this size without getting hand cramps is to put it under my press with something over the top of it like this bowl holding the pieces in place. And once I release the pressure off, the rubber bands pull all the pieces nice and tight together. So it's kind of a nice way to do it even without hand cramps. I cut these plywood segments out in advance. My thought was to use the band clamp on it. After looking it over, I decided I would just put these bar clamps across there. This let me adjust anything where it looked like it might need to squeeze up. It worked perfect. This was way better than what that band clamp would have done. I'm going to let this sit all night and we'll get back on it tomorrow. So the last part of this glue up is these six oversized wedges that I cut on my wedgie sled. Putting glue on a lot of pieces can be tedious, but I think watching glue being put on is even worse. So we'll get this done a little bit faster. Alright, that was fun. See you later. After hot gluing the tenon on, I flipped it around, I flattened that out and sanded it. It's nice and flat. This is going to be the top of the bowl, but it could barely be a dish as thick as this wood is. But in the beginning of the video, I said I was going to try to make a, a three-in-one turning. One being the illusion, and two, the segments. And now, I'm going to turn this into a bowl from a board. I'm going to use this little ring cutting guide that I made and this makes it real easy. There was a lot of interest in it so I made one from store-bought equipment. If you don't have metal working equipment I decided that there's a way to do it. You can buy this in two lengths. If I was actually making one of these I would get the shorter one. I put a piece of wood on it with a slot 
I didn't have any plastic at the time, but that uh, high density polyethylene would work better than wood. So I'll put a link in the description for both of these. I have it set up. I can probably only get two rings because I want to keep a nice border of this dark wood around there. I don't want to get real close to these points. So I'll probably leave about a half inch, I think. I've got a very narrow parting tool. I have this set up on a 45 degree angle from here. I'm going to go ahead and resharpen this. I haven't used it for a while. And we're doing about 600 RPM. Those two pieces of wood standing up behind the turning, that was kind of an experiment. I was trying to keep the piece from flying back onto the chuck and whipping around. It sort of worked on the first one. The second one was a total fail, so I don't even really want to tell you about this until I perfect it. Then we'll get this glued together and let it sit all night, and if we can get it in the lathe and finish turning it. I'm going to use this little cypress bowl that I keep out here to put small segments or whatever in. Also, it'll help me spread the pressure down on all of these rings. You can already see the glue is oozing out. And now I'll put some clamp pressure on there and it won't slide anymore. That should be enough. And it's got a nice squeeze out. I'm guessing it does on the inside as well. So tomorrow we'll get this up in the lathe and do something with it. I have it back in the chuck. The saddle night plus part of the morning. Basically I'm just going to clean this up. There's not a lot of shape I can do in this short distance. And both of these rings were cut out of 45. I just want to open this up so we can see the illusion. So I'm turning about 850 RPM. And you can see it's running quite true, and I'm pretty happy with how that glue up went. Half inch bowl gouge, and just clean it up. Okay, I need to switch to the back side now because I, uh, I don't know what that shape's going to look like yet. Okay, that's not bad. A little bit more right here. Yeah, I think I like it. Those are the shavings you get. Looks like coffee grounds.
Okay, so this is definitely not my favorite wood to turn, this roasted oak. I'll show you why. Look at that. Anyways, at least it comes off. So this is getting a little bit on the thin side. It's, it's about a quarter of an inch. I don't want any more off of that. Right, I just need to finish this off from here to the center. And I'll use my 5 8 gouge that has a conventional grind on it. Not bad at all. And I'm just going to soften this rim a little bit right here where it blends in. Okay, I think we are ready to sand. I'm going to go ahead and sand this now, and it should be pretty easy. All the wood sand nicely, and the roasted oak is soft, so it won't take much at all. I'll use my 2-inch disc, starting with 100 grit on the inside. And then on the outside, I think I'm going to use sheets of paper and just sand that roasted oak here. And when I get it off, I'll have to sand the base a little bit. Alright, so that was really easy and I'll sand all the way through 400 and we'll come back and get a finish on it. Got it all sanded to 400, time to put a finish on it and I decided to use the Menwax Wipe On Poly. And just like the name, I like to wipe it on. It looks like this roasted red oak is going to be very dark, which is what I was looking for. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. On the first coat, I want to make sure that it, it got everywhere and it soaks in good. I'll go ahead and do the bottom. And it'll look just like what we're doing. Same process. So... I'm going to let all this dry, maybe hit it with some 400 and do it two or three more times. And when we're through with that, we'll be back and I'll show you what we ended up with. It is all done and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It finished 11 and 5 eighths in diameter. It's two and a half inches tall and the base is seven inches. And it might be kind of wide for a base, but I wanted to keep the illusion on that flat plane. Same thing on the inside. For the illusion, I used walnut, maple, and cherry. I think that gives the best shadowing effect. And this darker wood is called cambia oak. And I think other people call it roasted oak. But I think it's one and the same. I used five coats of Minwax Wipe On Poly. And I only had to sand the first coat because it raised the grain. After that, I wiped it on really thin with a soft cloth. 
and then I went over it with axe abrasive paste and polish. So I also know that there's going to be questions about that piece. I gave the dimensions in the video on that piece and I talk about how you go about getting that dimension. So you can look back and find that. That's the only shape needed for the illusion. I also made these large segments. I didn't give the dimensions on them because I don't even know what they are. I put this in place, marked it, cut the segments and they all fit in place. That's another thing. The reason I'm calling this a 3-in-1 uh, 3D illusion bowl is because I built the illusion, I used the segments, and then I made a bowl from a board out of it. Which, I thought that was pretty cool to do that. I've got another one of these that I'm thinking about, but it's going to be way more complicated than this, so I've got some more thinking to do. But for now, I hope you like this, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, you can let me know by hitting that like button. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think. I love reading them all, and I do my best to answer them all. If you're currently not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I do all types of turnings, and I love doing them all. Let me know your favorites. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.